Check, check. All right, peace, 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 peace to the gods, peace to the gods. All right, sorry about that, y'all had a, I don't know what was going on right here, but I got my levels correct. Okay, peace to the gods, peace to the gods, what's happening? All right, let's get to it. Y'all see the title of it, something I know all of you have been waiting for. Do we have to pay taxes? Got a real good show lined up for you today. We are going to go over some case, uh, some history, going to look at a little bit of history, and we're going to go over some principles of law, and we're going to come to this conclusion, do we have to pay taxes? Now, what is really interesting, you know, a person in my position, I'm always going to be approached by individuals from the IRS. You know, they're, gonna, they're not going to tell me they're from the IRS, and everybody's going to always come and ask me, do we have to pay taxes? If you look at a lot of the gurus that are in jail right now, almost 100% of them are in jail for failing to file taxes. They'll, they will add things on top of that, like if they used a bond or some negotiable instruments or something like that. But if you always look in their indictment, there's something in there about taxes, that they failed to file taxes. So do we have an obligation to file taxes? Now, I like to pride myself on studying the law and understanding principles of law and things of that nature. So there's going to be several documents that I'm going to refer that you should read for your own self-aggrandizement and to further your education as it relates to these matters. The first and principal document that I'm going to suggest that you read is Invisible Contracts by George Mercier. Uh, that particular document did just elucidate for me um, an understanding of the difference between public and private and the jurisdiction of the federal government. Um, I had the, uh, fortunately for me, prior to reading that document, I had read William Blackstone's commentaries. So I understood in reading that document, every time he made reference to the king, I could make the relation of how, because you know our laws came from England and the jurisdiction of the king in England is the same jurisdiction of the United States that it has today. And in understanding and qualifying um, the word sovereign power of the United States. Uh, when you say sovereign of the United States, that is not the same term when you're using sovereign in our capacity. They are sovereign within the ambit of their delegated authority. This word plenary power is kind of like a synonymous, synonymous terms with uh, sovereignty of the United States. And we're going to get into all that today. It's going to be a very interesting uh, show. I think you need to um, share this far and wide. I know the IRS is watching. Um, I want you to watch because I'm getting sick of you trying to trying to uh, invade me or trying to get me into some sort of trouble by calling me on my phone and asking me all kind of questions. So to have, hopefully today we can rectify that because you already know I'm too smart for that. I'm sure you do. But you're going to continue to do it anyway. All right. So I'm going to do this today. So I have it on record my position about taxes because I'm getting tired of people coming at me about the taxes. And we're also going to talk about the discharge of taxes because that's what another question I get a lot. All right. Now, the first thing I like to do is people always coming into the chat. Like I had a guy, as soon as I walk in, he's talking about, and I hate individuals like this. He said, you claim to endorse this I'm Jonathan Ch uh, Charles. I, I, look, first thing I see, people always do this. You claim to endorse the birth certificate. When have I ever said to endorse the birth certificate? One has ever, and, and then, he, then he said, however, uh, what was your opinion about this? Under the Forgery Act of 1861, it's a criminal, the Forgery Act comes out of England. <laughs> These people. You're going to be, these are, this is what they mean when they call us sovereign citizens. Now, this person right here could very well be an agent or anybody like that. And a lot of them are not intelligent enough to invade you into us, uh, into something that their, their arguments are not intelligible. They're not very intelligent people, especially when you're dealing with someone like me. I'm very arrogant. I'm very sharp. I'm very studied. And if you're going to approach me with 
an argument about something, you need to be on top of your game, okay? You gotta understand that, I'm top level, okay? So keep the bullshit out, don't bring that over here. All right, so if you're new to the channel and you've heard of something about sovereign citizen, I'm not a sovereign citizen. If you're using that term, you're a goddamn fool. And you're illiterate because there's no such thing as a sovereign citizen and then as an oxymoron. A sovereign cannot be a goddamn citizen if you claim to be as intelligent as you think that you are. So let's look. Uh, where we got? It says the IRS can't even do their job thoroughly. Someone just fraudulently claimed me and my children I don't even file. I don't know about that. I wouldn't be saying that in the public. All right, but let's get to it. Okay. First and foremost, it's a couple of things. All right. Um, we're going to talk about the, the discharge of taxes. And also, but first, I'm going to get into some history. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is a case. There was an attorney. He used to, um, he used to fight uh, taxes all the time. And his name was Larry B. Craft. Larry B. Craft. And if you're new to this, you may not be familiar with Larry B. Craft. Um, but people like me who've been in this a, for a very long time, I'm very familiar with all these arguments. I uh, had an opportunity to, you know, um, Sherry, Ann, Sherry Peel Jackson, who's the attorney on From Freedom to Fascism. She's the black lady on there saying, show me the law. And we had a, time, uh, uh, a conversation privately. And she also read... Um, uh, uh, um, invisible contracts by George Mercier, and it kind of changed her perspective on the thing with paying taxes. All right, so hopefully I'm going to elucidate all of you and keep you out of jail as well, because a lot of you are going to go to jail making an argument that should we pay taxes when Jesus Christ already answered the question for you. So I, I think we ought to start there first. Let's start there first. So. Let's start in the Bible. Render unto Caesar. Let's look at the story of what Jesus said. It was Jesus Christ. He said it was a good ass story too. Let's go to Mark 12. Let me just go. Let me go to Mark 12. Mark 12. Let's do K KJV 17. It's a good story. Uh, let's start in the beginning because this is the same thing they use today. Okay, so let's start at 12. And it says, and he sought to lay hands upon him, but feared the people. For they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his words. These are the agents. Today we call them agents. They send IRS agents. They send all the agencies of government at you. The IRS and FBI, uh, who, whomever. All right? When you out there talking about we don't have to pay taxes. Okay, so they're going to send agents at you to catch you in your words. They may call you on the telephone. Do we have to pay taxes or something like that? They're going to catch you in your words because the same thing that applied then, then 2,000 years ago applies today. Anything you say can and will be used against you. I'm just a messenger. You don't have to listen to me if you don't want to, but do so at your peril. So next, let's look and see what Jesus and his infinite wisdom had to do, how he handled these devils. Because remember in St. John's cap, uh, 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 chapter four, he said, you have your father, the devil. All right. So let's look at this. He said, and when, and when they had come, they said unto him, Master, we know that thou art true. You speak in the truth. And cares for no man. That's how they do. They butter you up. You know, so I, yes, uh, you, uh, you know, Yusufel, I seen you on YouTube, man. You know, I like what you're doing. And you're really helping the people. And then you just, and I just be listening. I'll be waiting for it. And the thing about it is what people don't understand because I was, I did internet radio is that when you do radio, you're used to a, per, a person's spirit speaks to you before, the, before, before they do. And they can't mask that, especially when you're spiritually aware. So if they're a deceptive person, what they don't understand and recognize is that their spirit speaks before they do. All right? I'm, in, I'm, in a, I'm a person that's in tune spiritually. So if they have some sort of, um, um, you know, some sort of underhanded thing that they're attempting to do, usually I can kind of sense it pre pretty easily. 
And especially if you're rooted in the truth. If you just stay rooted in the truth, a lie can never penetrate you. All right. That's what they mean when they put a they say put on the breastplate of truth. OK, once you got that breastplate on, all the lies just they just bounce all off of you. But right here, this is what they're trying to butter them up. They do the same thing today. They're going to come to you and try to butter you up. Master Yusuf, we know you the truth, man, and you care for no man. And for you, regard is not the person of man. We don't care about their station in life. You don't care about these government agents or anybody in the public. But you teach us the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Some people, sometimes they, they, they uh, translate this as, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? So this is Jesus. Shall we give or shall we not give? But he knowing their hypocrisy. Are you listening, you agents who call me on the phone, who are in my chat, who are in my Facebook group? Knowing their hypocrisy said unto them, why tempt ye me? It's called entrapment today. It's called entrapment. Bring me the Federal Reserve note that I may see it. And they brought it and he said unto them, whose image is on the superscription? And they said unto him, the Federal Reserve. And Yusuf answered and said unto them, render unto the Federal Reserve the things that are Federal Reserve and God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him and went they way. Okay. All right. Where did the bear Larry be crabbed at? Okay. <sighs> did y'all get that? Did y'all get that right? Did, did, did that go over some people's heads right now? This is the premise of what we're going to be discussing today. See, the truth is simple. The truth is simple. But there's a lot of people out there, uh, it, it's, it's, it's in this day and time, that common sense is lacking. Because you got motherfuckers out here who try to identify or try to make a man into a woman and a woman into a man. And you motherfuckers out there are subscribing to it. You are heathens out there because you letting these demons in your government pull this shit off. You Christians, y'all done punked the fuck out. And I don't have no respect for you at all. By you letting this go on the way it is. You done punked out. All right. And especially you men out there letting these pedophiles and these motherfucking nutless ass senators and people in the government and everything pass these laws. That's why they be oppressing you with divorce and everything, because you got a man up there on Capitol Hill who's a bitch. I'm going to say what it is. That's why you letting, that's why they got the laws the way they are. Why you ain't getting this old bitch ass nigga out of office? Why are y'all letting these people stay in government the way that they are? Why are you letting them draft laws that break up families, that induce your women to get divorces and things like that and take half your shit? And you just think you ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I mean, what we got to do, Yusuf? I mean, you know, I don't want to get married. The woman take half my shit, you know. Don't you don't have to get just put all your stuff in a trust, man. She can't take half of nothing. Stop being afraid to get married. Just put your shit in a trust. If she want to get divorced, watch the video. I put a video up for you. Those who mistrust, okay? If you mistrust, you mistrust. Understand, put your property in a trust. 
Get your own business so you have your own. You can tell them what your salary is. And if she want to play that fucking game, let her get half of nothing. I don't understand what the big deal is. Stop being stupid. All right. So. Now that I got that out the way, because we got to understand, we got to stop. You got to understand that this is the United States of America. This is not the United States. This is America. We are not the United States. We are in America. The United States is a proper noun that applies to Washington, D.C. Let's look at this real quick. Location of the debtor. Nine three zero seven. Location of the debtor. Location of the debtor. Where is it at? Let's get down here. H. Location of the United States. The United States is it located in the District of Columbia. Now, do y'all see this? Can you read? We don't live in the United States. We live in the United States of America. This is America. It was named after America, Americo Van, Van Spucci or whatever his name is. You took American history in high school, you should know. All right. This is America. This is not the United States. Our states in America are united together. So our country is not called the United States. It's called America. And all the states in America are united together. This is some Federal Express type shit right here, which you would understand if you were in high school and you just learned basic English grammar. But they think they can get this shit over on you because they understand that half the population in the United States reads on a seventh grade level. The other half, probably another 25 percent is apathetic. I don't read, don't read nothing at all. And then the rest got a short ass attention span because they being programmed that way. That's why they putting out reels now. All right. Cause you ain't going to take no time to try to learn nothing. You got, you got about 10 minute attention span. All right. So they know all of this and they know half the country right now. Ain't no, got no goddamn common sense because they tested it all the time. <laughs> The United States is located in the District of Columbia. See, nothing is hidden. They have to operate under plausible deniability. So when people out there, well, you know, I was had somebody in my chat talking about, you know, I know they have certain secrets and things that they ain't no nothing goddamn hidden, motherfucker. There are basic principles. When you look, I don't matter if there's a monk in Tibet somewhere that got the secrets of discharging debt. It don't fucking matter because everything is based off of principles that are available to everybody. Ain't no goddamn secrets. Y'all think it's some motherfucker somewhere got a secret or some shit. <laughs> you know, somebody got there's a secret. Of <sighs> Lord, Lord, Lord. Help me today. Help me today. Help me today. All right. All right, let's get the likes up. We had 323 right now. Let's get the likes. Let's get the likes up to about 200. I appreciate that. Thank you for the donations right now. I'm trying to figure out how to, when y'all donate to put it on my screen. I ain't figured out how to do that. You know, if everybody be making the donations pop on the screen, I'm trying to still figure that out right now. I ain't figured it out yet. You know, I'm like, I'm gonna have to read. Thank you, sir, Ray, for the $2. Appreciate that, dog. Thank you for a top brother Yusuf looking good with the weight loss. Keep it up. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. I'll be getting my ass out. I'm exercising every day like a dog. You have no, no, uh, drinking water. Everything. I ain't even eat nothing today so far. You know, nothing. I had. I just had a smoothie so far. So I'm trying to make it all the way to the night and go to bed and wake up the next morning and do my ten miles again tomorrow. 
Don't mean to go off talk, but I'm interested in learning more about the esoteric knowledge and scientists. Where should I start? Start with the Kabbalion. You got to you got to start with basic principles. Everything, no matter what knowledge that you are involved in, everything begins with principles. You have to always start whatever subject that you're interested in. You have to master the principles of that subject because the principles are something that don't change. Like all you people out there giving relationship advice. You are not qualified to give relationship advice because you don't understand goddamn basic principles of masculine and feminine. How can a person give relationship advice and you don't know the universal natural law principles of what constitutes masculine and what constitutes feminine? And that's why these motherfuckers can come and tell you that, you know, it's, it, you, yeah, that a man can have a baby and shit like that. I know people laughing at the United States. I went to other countries and this shit not going on in other countries right now. It's ridiculous. But anyway. <laughs> Let's get to it. So we got that out the way. We got what Jesus said about render unto Caesar. What is the season? The Lord is the Lord. Just the, that roadmap still exists today. Ain't nothing changed about it. You know, watch what you say. People out there trying to trip you up. You out there talking about we ain't got to pay taxes and all this kind of stuff. And you're trying to tell somebody the Federal Reserve is not a governmental entity. It is a private international bank. When you got this, it's a Federal Reserve system and you come in in the Federal Reserve system telling another motherfucker about their money, what you ain't going to pay no taxes. What it is, is you don't realize as a U.S. citizen that you a slave. If you, do, if you do business effectively connected with a trade or business within the United States, you have a reporting obligation. If you a man out there say, I'm wrong, fuck you. You don't know what the fuck you talking about. Anytime you want to do a public debate with me, you can bring your ass on here and I will decapitate your dumb ass. And I'm going to do it for the public because I'm tired of you out here misleading people with these dumb ass so you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So let's get let's let's get into it. Let's see if I do. Let's start with an attorney right now. OK, there was somebody who was battling all this. And let's look at all the arguments first that people were making. Do we need to pay taxes? All right. This right here is a document. Larry B. Kraft, I want y'all to write that name down. He's an attorney. I don't know if I really trusted Mr. B. Kraft. He went to prison, but he was an attorney. And he argued that the income tax was actually an excise tax, which is a special tax on certain activities or uh, actual goods and services, you know, like special. And which is true to a certain extent. I don't agree, disagree with that at all. And you're going to see the government is not going to actually challenge any of those arguments, which should make you wonder. That's what that this is why we're going to do this, because it's going to be like, OK, well, there's no law that say we have to pay taxes. Joseph. There's no law. There's no law. It's an excise tax. This is the shit that. When you're in federal prison, the dudes sitting in sales for tax evasion are saying, OK, and they call them sovereign citizens. All right. So I'm going to try to stop you from joining that gang. All right. That's what we're going to do today. All right. Let's do let's start with the disclaimer. First and foremost, this report is intended purely as a communication of info. Oh, I forgot. Hold on, folks. Before I, before I go on, if you want to read this with me, let me put this in the chat for you. Let me put this in the chat for you. It's in the chat. So I'm going to say, class of use of veil cussing people out. Sometimes I got to. I just got to. I just got to. It, it just, it, I just got to because you, and when you're in my position, you just, when you try to make a sensible argument and it just don't penetrate, it just don't get in here. So, you know, we got to go through all this. <clears throat> I've been doing this 20 years. So let's look at it real quick. 
I put the link to this. It's also a link in the description of this video if you want to go and do your research. This has all the case law and everything you need to need that, that you need on any tax argument that you want to utilize. So we're going to go through this first and then we're going to look at something from the IRS and find out how to pay your taxes after this, all right? Or discharge or whatever you want to call it, okay? This report is intended purely as a communication of information in accordance with the right of free speech. It does not constitute legal or tax advice. Anyone seeking legal or tax advice should consult a competent professional. Neither the author, editor, or publisher assumes any responsibility for consequences of anyone acting according to the information in this report. Readers are specifically advised to obey all laws to the letter, and I am also in agreement with that because taxes are in the public, and the public is not our domain. So if you're going to want some information about the public, you need to go. Everybody in the public has to be licensed because they're in the public. So if you want tax advice, go to a tax professional. Do not contact me about taxes. Usually, I want to know, can you get a consultation? Can you have? No, motherfucker. See, you know why I said it like that? Because nobody will call me now. You know, and my phone won't ring. I had to say, no, motherfucker. You know, because if I say, no, please don't contact me about tax. Motherfucker, call me anyway. <laughs> try me. Somebody said, let me try this nigga. Anyway. U.S. versus Lloyd R. Long. The following article is reprinted from December 1993 edition of Free Enterprise Society News, 300 W. Shaw Avenue, number 205, Clovis, California, 93612. A not guilty verdict came in Eastern District of Tennessee in the case of U.S. versus Lloyd R. Long, and they got a case number there. The verdict came on October 15th, 1993. This was an amazing case involving the income tax. A Chattanooga jury agreed with the argument by Long that the income tax is actually an excise tax and only applies to certain classes of people. And I agree with that. It applies to U.S. citizens. <laughs> it applies to you. If you do business effectively connected with a trader business within the United States, there's a reporting obligation associated with, with that. Right? That's like you coming in my house. And y'all like come in the refrigerator and get food out the refrigerator and then tell me you ain't got to pay for it. You in my house. I make the rules in my house. You can do that in your house. But when you come in my house, it don't matter what the rules of the country are. You in my house and my house is my kingdom. And if I tell you to take off your damn shoes in my house, that's what you're going to do. All right. So we got to understand we are in the house of the Federal Reserve. So let's look at this again. Nationally prominent attorney Lowell B. Craft of Huntsville, Alabama, assisted by attorney Russell J. Leonard of Sewanee, Tennessee, defended Lloyd R. Long of Deshard, Tennessee. Long was charged with willful failure to file income tax returns for 1989 and 1990. Willful failure to file. That's what you're going to see a lot of these gurus get. Willful, willful failure to file. In presenting the case for the IRS, the government represented by Assistant U.S. Attorney Curtis Collier, assisted by Special Agent Michael Jeasley of the IRS, declared that Long had gross income tax and income in excess of $49,000 for each year and that he willfully failed to file income tax returns. The defense admitted that Long had an income in excess of $49,000. They didn't admit it, he had an income for each year in question and that he did not file a return. So, all right, so we have a stipulation on the facts. They agree with the, uh, the, the government. You had $49,000 of income and your ass didn't file. He then proceeded to prove to the jury beyond a reasonable doubt that he was not liable for an income tax, nor was he required by law to file. Defense attorneys showed a case titled Brush, uh, Brush a Burr versus Union Pacific Railroad, wherein it was the unanimous decision of the U.S. Supreme Court that the 16th Amendment did not give Congress any new power to tax any new subjects. It merely, try, it, it merely tried to simplify the way in which the tax was imposed. It also showed that the income tax was in fact an excise tax on corporate privileges and privileged occupations, something else that I agree with. It is a tax on corporations, privileges, and privileged occupations. That key right there, privileges, you only tax the what? 
benefits and privileges. You're not taxed on rights. You are not taxed on right. Write that down. Spell it out. You are not taxed on rights. You're taxed on benefits and privileges. More specifically, corporate privileges and benefits. The defense then brought out a case titled entitled Flint versus Stone Tracy, wherein an excise tax was defined as a tax laid upon the manufacture, sale, and consumption of commodities within the country. I'd have to qualify that. Upon licenses to pursue certain occupations and upon corporate privileges. Mr. Long's attorney also brought out a case entitled Sims versus, uh, what is it, Orange? where in the court ruled that the income tax was neither a property tax nor a tax upon occupation of common right, but was an excise tax. Here we go. Here's all the case law right here for you. The defense then brought out a case uh, entitled Renfield versus Fisher, when the court ruled that the individual, unlike the corporation, cannot be taxed for the mere privilege of existing, but that the individual's right to live and own property was a natural right upon which an excise cannot be imposed. Defense also pointed to a couple of studies done by Congressional Research Service that shows the income tax is an excise. Next, defense pointed out that in Tennessee's Supreme Court case, Jack Cole versus Commissioner, that's the Commissioner of the IRS, the court ruled that citizens are entitled by right to income or earnings and that right could not be taxed as a privilege. You do have a right to income or earnings. You just don't have a right to income and earnings under a corporation that's incorporated, incorporated with the state and the utilization of Federal Reserve notes, public versus private. I render un Caesar's world is the public, God's world is the private. Your rights are in the private, your privileges are in the public. There are two sides to everything. Somebody asked me earlier about natural law principles. One of them is polarity. There are two sides to everything. Let me read it again. The defense then brought out a case entitled Renfield versus Fisher, wherein the court ruled that the individual, unlike the corporation, cannot be taxed for the mere privilege of existing, but that the individual's right to live and own property was a natural right upon which an excise cannot be imposed. Defense also pointed to a couple of studies by Congressional Research Service that shows income taxes and excise. Next, defense pointed out that in the Tennessee Supreme Court case, Jack Cole versus Commissioner, the court ruled that citizens are entitled by right to income or earnings, and that right could not be taxed as a privilege. In another Tennessee Supreme Court case, Corn versus Fort, the court ruled that individuals have the right to combine their activities as partnerships and that this is a natural right and independent and antecedent of government. True. The prosecution did not challenge or attempt to refute any of these cases cited or the conclusions of the court. That should have caused alarm right there. They say, yeah, you right about all that. You right about all that. We're not going to argue about none of that. Because, see, we have to qualify. This is the public versus private thing. This is what they keep secret. So the government is keeping quiet because they're saying, yeah, motherfucker, you right. What you don't understand, the status, your status is what we're talking about. Are you forming a partnership privately or did you come and get a corporation that's incorporated under the state? Are you doing business with a U.S. citizen? Are you doing business effectively connected with a trade or business within the United States as we just seen that is in Washington, D.C. or one of its franchises? Do you understand what I'm saying? Let's keep going. They did, the prosecution did not challenge or attempt to refute any of these cases cited or the conclusions of the court. Defense brought out in testimony the fact that nowhere in the entire IRS code was anyone actually made liable for the income tax. They showed that in the IRS's own Privacy Act notice, only three sections were cited and that none of these sections made anyone liable for the tax. They also proved that this was not an oversight by showing that the alcohol tax was worded so clearly that no one could misinterpret it who was liable for the alcohol tax. And this is the, uh, the uh, ATF alcohol, to, uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms is where the IRS came from. 
Now we're gonna have to do, there is a document, Dan Meter and um, Dan Meter and William Cooper. It's on SPC University in my blog section. You don't have to be a member to read it. You should go over there and read that. Prosecution did not challenge or attempt to refute this point, nor were they able to show a statute that made anyone liable for the income tax. This right here is when you get from freedom to fascism. Sherry, uh, Sherry Peel Jackson and all them, the Myers agents, they were talking about, show me, show me the law. Show me the law. All right, everybody caught up? Okay. Defense then presented the mission statement of the IRS stating that the income tax were laid upon voluntary compliance. What does that mean? We're going to get into that. And a statement from the head of the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax Division of the IRS, which in essence showed that the income tax is 100% voluntary as opposed to the alcohol tax, which is 100% mandatory. Mr. Long stated that in 1989, he knew that the income tax was in fact an excise tax and that he was not enjoying any corporations and that income or earnings from the ex uh, exercise of common right cannot be taxed as an exercise or otherwise, and that nowhere in the IRS code was he made liable for the tax and that the income tax was voluntary. Long then stated he was so intimidated by the IRS that he filed and paid his voluntary assessment. He then began a series of letters. He then began uh, a series of letters to the IRS, explaining that he had no license or privileges issued to him by the federal government. He asked for direct answers to simple questions such as, "Am I required to file uh, to file federal income tax returns?" You, I think this is the. Um, if you go to Freedom the Fascism, you can actually see the video of that in that. Everybody should watch that. Okay. Am I required to file federal income tax returns? Am I liable for federal income taxes? The IRS never gave a direct answer to any questions. Instead, they inferred and insinuated and extrapolated and beat around the bush and generally avoid answering. So Mr. Long testified that he decided to stop volunteering. The IRS brought in two expert witnesses. Both were actually IRS employees who had received training as professional witnesses. Upon cross-examination by attorney B. Kraft, one witness, Mr. Zhu, stated a secret code known only to the IRS and encoded on Mr. Long's permanent record. Okay, and I think this is when you get your, um, if you get your, uh, your individual um, master file, all right, you should request your individual master file and there is a, a coding manual, decoding manual that is on SPC University that's used to decode it. Um, we'll talk about that in a, little, in a little bit later. You have a master file. I ordered mine. Really interested. If you've been married, your wife information gonna be on there. All kind of information. It was really, it was had some. My social security number and everything was on there. It's really, really interesting when you pull up your individual master file. Write that down. Individual master file. All right. It says that. Uh, uh, okay, Mr. Jew made. Uh, it says uh, Mr. Jew stated that the secret code don't only to the IRS and encoded on Mr. Long's permanent record showed that the IRS knew that he was not required to mail or file a return. Now, um, there is a website I'll go to later. They, by using that individual master file, there is something coded on there that does say whether or not you're liable to pay a tax. It's really interesting. There's a website devoted to this. However, you need to understand some things before you get in, in, into that. Mr. Zhu made every effort to avoid the admissions to the point that he was beginning to frustrate the jury. The other witness upon cross-examination by Beecraft gave testimony that conflicted with the Privacy Act notice. The government also attempted to insinuate uh, institute guilt by association and that they claimed Mr. Long had known and relied upon persons of questionable character. They argued that the writers of some of the books he read and people he knew had been convicted of tax related charges in the past and were in fact criminals. Long responded that just because a person had been convicted of a crime by a court did not invalidate everything he said. To illustrate this point, he point I wish that was true because y'all got criminals in there getting time reduced, uh, you know, telling on people. To illustrate his point, he pointed out that an apostle Paul was, was, was a murderer, but that he, but the grace of God, he became the greatest of the apostles. No, the fuck he didn't. That's a lie. He was never an apostle. He's a 13th self-appointed apostle. They call him apostle of God. We're going to have to have, we're going we gonna to have a, a, a class on St. Paul, disciple or deceiver. Because I know that's going to rattle a whole bunch of feathers out there 
when I start talking about that, but I am not a follower of the apostle Paul. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, not Paul. Some of y'all out there, y'all claim to be Christians and you ain't Christ-like because Christ-like mean to follow Jesus and you don't follow Jesus, you follow Paul. Because that's why you're in the book of Acts with 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Thessalonians, Galatians, Romans, those epistles, which are letters to the Gentile nations because you don't know who you are. We're going to talk about that. We're going to get into that too. All right. Mr. Long added that he did not rely on anything that he did not personally check out thoroughly. In summation, and you can check something out thoroughly, but you still may not have a good, good uh, comprehension of what you're doing, which is what a lot of people have. They don't have good comprehension. They think they know. In summation, attorney Larry B. Kraft reminded them that Galileo was in prison for holding the belief that conflicted with one uh, with one which everyone else knew as a fact that Columbus acted on the belief which conflicted with what everyone else knew as a fact discovered something no one else thought existed. Remember, you know, prior to that, everybody thought the world was flat. You're going to sell off the end of the world, all you flat earthers out there. Y'all act like that's new, that's not new. You still ain't explained to me how in Rome and Greece, they know the world is round because Atlas is holding the world on its back. So if you got... Over 2,000 years ago, they knew the earth was round. Why the hell you don't understand it? I don't understand. And y'all have some of the most ridiculous arguments. We'll get into that another time. I, and right now, you can help my analytics. You can fire up the chat and start talking. Well, you know, you, you understand. The earth is flat. Okay. That's what they try to do. They, they try to say, we ought to pay taxes. They try to make you a flat earther. You probably believe you, it, the earth is flat too, don't you, Yusuf? You want them sovereign citizens. <laughs> they try to use that to equate. See, what they try to do to discredit you, they try to associate you with stupidity, to discredit you. That's one of the tactics they like to use. Remember that. The jury agreed with the defense by finding Mr. Long not guilty in all counts. They had ventured into history as preservers of freedom. That's on freedom to fascism. A Chattanooga TV station quoted a governor spokesman and saying that the case will be changed, uh, will change the way the IRS will handle such cases in the future. They indicated that they will be less likely to prosecute if a jury isn't going to decide in their favor. A Chattanooga TV uh, station quoted a government spokesman as saying that this case will change the way the IRS will handle the such cases in the future. They indicated they were less likely to prosecute if a jury isn't going to decide in their favor. Okay. Mr. Long's spirit was best expressed when he was asked for a final statement by a reporter as he was leaving the courtroom, his words, to God be the glory. Congratulations, Lloyd. All right. Before analyzing the Beecraft landmark case, I want to address an emotional issue. For emotional reasons, many people fear the IRS. They have seen horror stories about the IRS victims on TV and read about them in the newspapers. They don't want to rock the IRS's boat because they fear they might become an IRS victim. They know that the IRS is a terrorist organization that can take their personal property, destroy their business, and ruin their lives. Their fear and emotion prevents them from thinking rationally about the IRS. The IRS could even utilize their terrorist brothers from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms to slaughter anyone who tries to rock the boat. Did you see the pictures of the Waco massacre on TV? The following article appeared in the Arizona Republic of May 1994. The Associated Press, Washington, Internal Revenue Service failed to collect $127 billion in taxes from 1992. Yet audits uh, that might be curbed, uh, the audits that might have curbed the ever-growing tax gap were conducted at half the rate of 11 years earlier, a congressional report says. This is another reason why they're going to get rid of cash because they're going to get all their tax money. They're they going to get all their money as soon as they get rid of all uh, cash. They got, they got something for your ass when they come in for that. IRS major enforcement activities have not grown over the past decade, according to the General Accounting Office, Audis, Office the auditing arm of Congress. From 1981 to 1992, the odds of getting audited fell from 1 in 20 to 1 in 33 for corporations and from 1 in 56 and 1 in 110 for individuals. Now, they hired a lot of new IRS agents. We know that recently. 
Also, additionally, this is when you see people, I ain't paid taxes in 20 years. That don't mean anything to me. They just ain't caught up with your ass yet. Uh, like a, like, like a, like a, like a, a, a U.S. Marshal told me this one time. He said, we got, what did he say? He said, we have 20,000 people on the run and we have 100,000 indictments we haven't served yet. Remember that. Those numbers may be misleading, misleadingly optimistic, the congressional agency said. Wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Let me go down here somewhere. Let's see. Um, yeah, let me do this. Beecraft strategy. Mr. Beecraft's strategy was to establish in court certain weaknesses of the IRS, namely the supposed income tax is really an excise tax, which only applies to certain classes of people engaged in certain activities. I agree. The 16th Amendment grants no additional taxing power to the federal government. I agree. An individual as opposed to a corporation has a natural right to live, work, and own property without being taxed. I agree. Individuals have the right to produce earnings and income not subject to taxation. I agree. Individuals have the right to combine their activities in the form, in the form of partnerships. This is a natural right independent of and antecedent to the government. I agree. All right. How could I agree with all that and still say that you have to file your taxes? All right. It starts with public versus private. All right. Let me see if I can pull up the chart. Public versus private. Let me see if I can pull up the chart. Can I pull up the chart? Let me see if I can pull up the chart for you, public. All right, okay. Let me see if I can download it real quick. Put it on the screen for you. Download. Let me go in the download zoom. Download. Uh, and download. I don't ever download my file. Let me try it again. Let me try this right here. All right, let me just blow this up right here. Okay. This ain't gonna download. Yeah, there, there we go. <clears throat> all right now we're going to start right here all right public law and private law on the public side we have constitutional law criminal law administrative law tax law and public international law on the private side we have contract law property law Tort law, family law, private international law. Now, this is just a skeletal framework. These can be fleshed out. There are more areas of law that apply to each side, but these are the main ones. Now, I want to draw your attention that in the public, you have the Constitution. The reason the Constitution is in the public, because really the Constitution don't have anything to do with you as a private citizen. The Constitution is like a trust document. It's like me as a settler creating a trust for trustees, all right? It formed the government and it restrains the government because it outlines the extent of their powers. It enumerates their powers. It says what they can and what they can't do. So you don't have constitutional rights. You have constitutionally protected rights. In that document, we put some clauses that they can make no law that will infringe on the obligation of contracts. 
That's because contracts are what private individuals engage in. All interaction between private individuals is contractual in nature, whether expressed or implied. And we don't want the government in our business. And the government is continuously, year after year, continually to encroach more and more in your business because more and more you are entrenched in the public. And now we have these communist sympathizers who don't understand this themselves, who want a communist form of government. So we also see tax laws in the public. So that should tell you that taxes are only in the public. They are not in the private. So anything is private is not taxed. It doesn't matter if you are more or you're talking about this. And uh, it, that's why private trust is not taxed because it's private because there isn't any taxes on the private side. However, that doesn't mean a private trust cannot come into the public and do business because the trust will contract with public individuals because it needs to get something built. So I might get a licensed contractor to build something and he's in the public. So now this private entity is effectively doing business a tra with a trader business within the United States. I left the private and came into the public to do business. So that means there's a reporting obligation. I have, I have to do this because I, I have to pause this real quick because I got to make sure I got to read the chat and make sure that everybody understands what I'm talking about right here. Let me see if people always. He say, I always respect you, sir. He get a pass for being a globe head. I'll respect you for being a dummy. <laughs> I'll respect you. You can respect me all I want. You was a damn fool. You tell think the, uh, the world is flat. I just thank you. I just thank y'all are idiots <laughs> for doing that. You can say whatever you want. I respect you. You know, you got your opinion because you don't have no evidence Y'all be talking like the earth is flat and you'll have a goddamn rocket. So shut the fuck up. You don't have a rocket ship. OK, Elon Musk is going to get ready to go in outer space and take people up there. We're going to get our answer. So why don't you reserve your comments before you made me look like a goddamn fool? Because what you going to say, we go up there and everybody see well, the earth is round. You think it's some damn big conspiracy. <laughs> OK, so. So, right here, you got an understanding of public and private. So, understand, tax law is in the public. So, when you're learning to be private, okay, if you don't want to pay taxes, all your affairs have to be private. This is what they were trying to show you in, um, uh, what's the movie um, with Keanu Reeves? Uh, what was the name of that movie where he was killing everybody, kicking ass and shit like that when they was using gold for everything and they burnt up the Federal Reserve notes? There's only one one section in the whole movie where you see Federal Reserve notes and he burned them up. Everything was done in gold and silver and everything was done through contract and agreement. They had a whole society that if you agreed to be a part of that society, you were under a contract. So the whole entire society was private and they did not invite any. Yeah, John Wick. They didn't invite anybody from the outside. Let's see if I got it in here. Yeah, let's, let's look at it real quick. Let's look at some John Wick real quick. <laughs> let's look at some John Wick real quick. Let me see if I can pull up this John Wick. We got to look at this, all right? John Wick. Okay. I think when we look at it, you know, it's John Wick right here. So let's look at John Wick. Ladies, oh. Honestly, what do you think you're going to do with all of that? This.
Message. <laughs> message. <laughs> Y'all might not catch the message. Message. Hold on, I, I, I was in the way. Let me do it again. You know, let me do it again so y'all can see it. <laughs> Honestly, what do you think you're going to do with all of that? This. Now, that was the only scene in the movie you saw Federal Reserve notes, all right? The only scene in the whole entire movie. Everywhere else in the movie, let's see if I can pull it up. All right, all through the movie, you see that John Wick was doing stuff and what is it? Go. And what is the thing? Type the thing out, man. I got it. Okay, there it is right here. Let's see if it's let's see if let's see if we got a gold scene in here. John Wilk will come for you. Let's see. That might be it right there. I think, I think this is it right here. It's like John Wick will come for you. According to Goldman Sachs, 300 now million people are about commercial to commercial find themselves on the wrong side of a- How's your trip, kid? We won't be hearing from them anytime soon. Or ever. All right. When it's John Wick- No one could have pulled off. When John Wick get ready to do business, what does he do? Where is, let me see if it's in here. Guns and gold. He getting ready to do business, and he does business privately. As a matter of fact, there's a scene in here where people came to his house, he slaughtered their ass, and the police came. And they like, you know, John over there, okay? He looked back, showed the police dead bodies in there. Everything's fine. Left him alone. It's a private jurisdiction. Ain't none of y'all business in the public. Stay out of our business. All right. Obviously, these are powerful people, but stay out of our business. It's private. Remember back in the United States when you wanted to have a duel or you wanted to have a shootout in the street and the sheriff would come and sit there and watch. As long as you didn't shoot nobody in the back, the, the damn uh, coroner or the, what's the person, the undertaker would be there sitting with the coffins waiting and then we all shot each other down in the street. They bury you. Long, it's a fair fight. You handle your business. You protected your property yourself with your guns. All of this. This is the United States in its Republican form of government of how a free country is supposed to operate. Okay? Before we had licensed guns, okay, with serial numbers on them, that were created by corporations that are incorporated with the government before you had automobiles that had VIN numbers on them that were manufactured by corporations that are incorporated with the United States. All right? Before you had all of that, everything was public. The private side ruled. Now the public side dominates everything. Corporations. The world is a corporation. Let's look at this real quick. Okay, I'm sorry about that, y'all. Everybody like, yeah, 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 uh, your, 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 uh, volume is down. Okay, I got it, got it, got it. Calm down. Calm down. I got it. I got it. I got it. Got it. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I had muted myself for the the uh, 
during the, uh, during the uh, clip that I was just showing you. All right, let me repeat what I just said. First, that was Network. The movie was Network that I just showed you the clip of. You need to go back and watch that movie, okay? Watch that movie. All right. Sorry about that. I wasn't paying attention. I, I got caught slipping. All right. Go back and watch that movie, Network. That is a good message in there. And for you to understand that everything is a corporation, everything falls under the Uniform Commercial Code or the Law Merchant. Because the Uniform Commercial Code comes from the Law Merchant. I'm putting together a video right now to show you all all this. This right here that I just read is 27 Code of Federal Regulations, 72.11 Commercial Crimes. Any of the following types of crimes, federal or state, Offenses against the revenue laws. This one covers a whole bunch of them. Like when you're selling dope. Selling dope is an offense against the revenue laws. Burglary, counterfeiting, forgery, kidnapping, larceny, robbery, illegal sale or possession of deadly weapons, prostitution, including soliciting, procuring, pandering, white slaving, keeping house of ill fame and like offenses, extortion, swindling and confidence games, and attempting to commit conspiring to commit or compounding any of the foregoing crimes, addiction to narcotic drugs and use of marijuana would be treated if such were a commercial crime. So we're talking about commerce, commerce. Everywhere I look is commerce. Everywhere. Even when the attorneys, that attorney from that other website came over talking shit to me and I looked up his case. The case is right here. What was the name of the case? Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. What is it? U.S. versus Lopez. U.S. versus Lopez. Even you look up that case, the Supreme Court justice say everything y'all do is commercial in nature. It's all commerce, okay? So if you're being taxed, it has something related to something commercial, which you don't have a right in that area you are dealing with something that is not within the purview of your sovereign authority, okay? There's some sort of minimum contact that you have engaged in that is granted jurisdiction to the federal government, and it is usually something commercially related. So a lot of people, and, and I think the number one thing is the use of Federal Reserve notes. I think it's the number one thing. Because a lot of people think you do have a right to work. You do have a right to form your own partnership. You do have a right to all these things. But what you don't have a right to do is use Federal Reserve notes. You don't have a right to use Federal Reserve notes. Now, so when I was reading that case, that dude won that case because he went to before a jury. But a lot of people have lost. That The IRS learned from that situation. Larry B. Kraft actually ended up in jail. Like a lot of tax protesters end up in jail. And they said, well, you, if you pay tax, somebody always asks me, you pay taxes? Yes, I pay taxes because I have a business that is incorporated with the state and I do business with U.S. citizens because a lot of the people who are on my website, they got bank accounts with social security numbers. They work nine to five jobs and the money they're coming in are Federal Reserve notes in a Federal Reserve system. And if you in some kind of way in your infinite wisdom think there's a problem with that, the problem is not with me. The problem is with you because you are an idiot and you are stupid and you don't understand public versus private. And I know that's going to offend you, but I really don't give a fuck because I've been doing this a very long time. I've been in federal prison. I didn't seen all the different arguments and everything. And I would like to think 
that I have a very good comprehension of the things that I read. And that is why I'm here to dispel a lot of the bullshit that is being circulated amongst the sovereign community. Because it's a lot of bullshit. It's a lot of motherfucking bullshit. And I'm sent to clear all of that shit up. Because a lot of people think that they have a right as if the government don't have a right. There are private rights and there are public rights. The government has rights too, motherfucker. Okay? We gave a delegation of authority to them under the Constitution. If you're sitting there thinking the government don't have a public right, you're stupid. Let's look at it real quick. It's called the Public Rights Doctrine. I hope y'all writing this down. I hope y'all writing this down. I hope you're writing it down. All right. Let's see what this say here says. This might be a good article. I just pulled this up. Federalism, private rights, and Article Three adjudication. This article sheds new light on the private rights, public rights. Private rights, public rights. You seem to think, as a sovereign, you're the only one with rights. And this, I think, is a major flaw that, for some reason, none of the, my predecessors ever seemed to address. And I understand why, because they, because the, I'm here to fill in that gap. They did their little job on whatever they did. I'm here to fill in that gap. The article sheds new light on the private rights, public rights distinction used by the Supreme Court to assess the extent to which the United States Constitution permits adjudication by non-Article III federal tribunals. Tax court is an Article I court, by the way. They will admit that tax court is an Article I court. They will admit that. State courts have traditionally been the primary deciders of lawsuits over private rights. Historically defined as suits regarding the liability of one individual to another under the law is defined. If Congress could limitlessly assign adjudication of private right cases to federal officials lacking the life tenure and salary protections of Article III judges, the political branches of the federal government would enjoy vastly expanded authority to encroach on state courts' traditional authority to decide common law and equity cases between individuals which they're doing at an ever-increasing incre clip because everybody's a U.S. citizen. We don't always say, if, you are, if the United States is in Washington, D.C., then where is a U.S. citizen? A U.S. citizen was created by Congress. That's their property. The Social Security number was created by Congress. That's their property. We argue that such vast congressional power is inconsistent with the limits on federal authority in a constitutional scheme in which state courts have traditionally dominated the adjudication of ordinary private disputes and in which Congress's power of direct taxation and ability to create lower federal courts were hard-won concessions when the Constitution was adopted. Article III's implicit constraints on congressional power to confer private rights cases on non-Article III federal tribunals effectively checks federal power to supplant state court adjudication by requiring that adjudicative power over such cases go substantially to Article III courts. Now, let me just say this. I will say this to all of you. The whole purpose of Article III courts is to protect private rights. That's what they're there for. And that's why they don't get a lot of business. Because the Republic is a house that no one lives in. Did, 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 did y'all understand what I just said right there? Hold, hold on. I got to go over here and look. Did, did, did y'all get what I said? Thank you, 999 Danny Levels. But used, if I would argue that being a beneficiary state citizen could just summarily be called a taxable receiver of benefits and privileges, it seems worth discussing. What do you mean a beneficiary state citizen? What are you a beneficiary of? The only thing you're a beneficiary of as a state citizen is the right to conduct your affairs privately. You don't have no damn rights to come into the public and do any business under a congressionally controlled or state controlled uh, uh, scheme. This is a free country. You can argue all you want to. That argument has failed 1,267,000 times and I have to say that the government is correct. 
Call me a government agent or call me ever want. I will argue that I'm more intelligent than you. <laughs> if you call me a government agent, my argument is, no, I'm not a government agent. I'm just vastly more intelligent than you. <laughs> That's going to be my argument. I just not, I'm not a government agent. I'm just vastly more intelligent, more well-read, have a better understanding of principles of law and constitution than you do. That's going to be my argument. So you can call me an agent all you want. I'm sitting here telling you, you don't have no fundamental right to use Federal Reserve notes. The Federal Reserve is not even a governmental entity. They get their concession from the Federal Reserve Act, which was passed by Congress, which makes it under their jurisdiction as well. Somebody said, what do you mean? The rep Let's look at this real quick. Because somebody said, what do you mean? The Republic is a house no one, no one lives in. Okay, I know you knew. All right. Let me get let me put a link in the chat real quick. Let me put a link in the chat. Because that's what I like to do when I start arguing that you have to pay taxes first day. Y'all think Yusuf is a gatekeeper. He's an agent. No, nigga, I'm trying to keep your dumb ass out of jail. <laughs> Just trying to keep you out of jail and trying to teach you how to do business. Because really what it really at the, at the end of the day, what it really is, you're just not a businessman or woman. That's really what it is. You have an employee mindset or something like that. You really because the whole system is designed for business people. It's the whole system is designed for business people. And you, you don't comprehend it because you're just not a business person. You don't need to be playing on the monopoly board at all. OK. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this real quick. Well, somebody said, you know, Yusuf is an agent. <laughs> agent of the government. You know, he's sitting there saying, we got to pay taxes. Why don't he join us and our charge on the government to say taxes are illegal? They say it's voluntary because you can, you, you have... You voluntarily, when they say it's voluntary, they're not talking about voluntarily reporting taxes. They saying you voluntarily uh, participating in the system. That's what they mean. Y'all got that word voluntary confused. You voluntarily participating in their system. All right, so real quick. Where is it at? Oh, there it is right there. Let's see. All right. All right, so I put the link in the chat. The Republic is a house no one lives in. That's where I got it from. Okay, I'm just gonna read the introduction. Um, our republic is now celebrating the 200th birthday of the Bill of Rights in our Constitution. Through the wisdom of the few free-thinking men, we have incredibly we have come incredibly far in 200 years. Our nation has been blessed with prosperity more than any other in world history. Um, no, I, that's some old. Let me see if we got some. Communism raises its ugly head. That's true. Um, Democracy and communism, that's all democracy is. Anybody who does a cursory examination of democracy is going to come to the same conclusion. Everyone who is really educated on communism and democracy understands a synonymous terms. Uh, private law and public municipal law, that's what we're going against. I mean, this dude, he did all the same research I came to. But federalism is what we're dealing with right now. All right, when you're talking about democracy and their and their jurisdiction it's really federalism and the republic is outside of federalism all right and that's what we need to federalism this right here is going to be something that you can read if you want to understand the republic is a house no one lives in this thing is chalk full with information you can do your own research on it all right real property i mean it's real good this dude this dude right here very good research 
He's on the same path that I'm on. I'm not the only person that understands this. There's a lot of other individuals out there that came, my predecessors, who do understand this, who do understand it. Not, they, a lot of them are not prominent because the ones that are prominent are the ones that can come in and say, you can get free shit or we don't have to pay no taxes. That, that's stuff. The, that's because people who have a victim mindset, they're going to gravitate toward those type of individuals when they come in. Those people who are responsible individuals and who will and who understand accountability for their own actions and understand their gods and goddesses, they don't gravitate toward those kind of individuals. They they take make the effort to understand their situation before they start making a move. I know I'm pissing off some people. I know I'm pissing off some people. I don't give a damn. Let me go over here to live stream real quick. Yeah, when, when people do say republic, the first thing they do think is Republican democ which I do think, I do think that Republican and Democrat do derive from democracy and the Republican form of government. I do think. And let me tell you why. Because a lot of people argue that the federal government, both sides are are, are evil. I will I will say, I will go as far as to say that yes, I believe that both sides are controlled by special interest groups. I however I also understand that you, because we live in what is called a free will universe, they always have to provide you with a choice. Everything has to be a choice. They cannot bring in the new world order and force it on you. You need to remember what I'm telling you. The whole entire system requires voluntary consent. You better not never forget that. Why do you think they try to convince y'all to give up? They have to convince you to voluntarily give up your guns. They can't force you to give up your guns. They have to convince you to do that. And then they like to the demo democracy because the majority can do that. If they can get majority hold of it, then they can force you to do it. That's why they like democracy. It's not about the votes who is who controls the votes. They want a system that they can control and they can do that in a democracy. They can't do that in a republic because a republic requires that they respect the rights of the individual. That's why they don't like a republic. Let's look at something else real quick because I've been going on a hour and 27 minutes. Let's look at payment of taxes real quick. All right. All right. Let's go to this page. All right. This is the IRS employee manual. I know how the IRS, I had to do this because I know the IRS, the IRS agents are looking. So I, you have to use their stuff when you explain stuff. So you will find that almost the answer to any of your questions regarding discharge of debt is in the IRS employee manual. OK, and an old white lady gave me this information years ago, and I have to say that it was some of the best information I ever got. I'll put the link to it in the chat. All right. So let's look at unacceptable forms of payment that the IRS will not take as a form of payment coming off of their website, the IRS website. And these are the instructions for the employees of the IRS. This is 3.8.45.5.9, and it was just updated August 10th, 2023. So that was only some months ago. Unacceptable payment of taxes are items that the depository bank would not accept as payment. Any of the following items found in the payment perfection unit must be returned to the taxpayer using letter 4480C. If these items are not returned immediately, they must be stored in a locked safe. So these are the things that the IRS will not accept as payment of taxes. They will not accept gold, silver, jewelry, stamps, 
savings bonds, treasury notes, treasury bills, stocks, treasury certificates of deposits, promissory notes, gold coins other than U.S. currency, deposit slips or withdrawal slips, credit cards, debit cards, gift cards, tickets to events, lottery tickets, obviously fake money such as Monopoly money, oversized billion dollar bills, currency copy with animals or other unusual items printed on the bill, etc., expired or stale dated checks, unexpired passports, if the passport is expired, turn, turn over to the operations manager, manager or receipt control to destroy. Now, there's the list. If you give them something on the list, these people done already told your stupid ass we don't accept it. And you saw promissory notes on there. Now, they have a note for you sovereign citizens. Right here, note. If a promissory note is returned to the taxpayer and the taxpayer sends the note in again citing public policy HJR 192, Forward the note to the criminal investigation field office, attention special agent in charge of the state the taxpayer resides. So somebody's probably going to be paying you a visit. Now let's look at something else. Let's look at 3.8.45.5.10.1. Last time updated November 4th, 2011. If a bill of exchange or registered bill of exchange is received from a taxpayer authorizing the campus to settle their account through Fedwire, send everything received to the following address. Department of the Treasury, Office of Executive Secretary, 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, Room 3413, Washington, D.C., 20220. Now, let me ask you, where do y'all send y'all bonds to? Now, I'm not going to get too deep into that. I wanted to kind of touch on that a little bit and come from their documentation as what is acceptable and what is not. Now, we just got confirmation that if you send them a bill of exchange, what it has to have an authorization, it can be registered bill of exchange, it can be through Fedwire, the agents or the employees are instructed when they get one of those to send it to that address. What is waiting at that address? Don't say they don't take it. It didn't say they don't take it. What well, I means it doesn't say bill of exchange? It just... Let me read this again. I mean, let me read it one more time because we got some people in the comment section who obviously have trouble reading. Bill of exchange 3.8.45.5.10.1. Are you getting that in, 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 in the chat? Did you get that in the chat? Right there. The vision may ray whatever he said doesn't say bill of exchange. Are you having trouble reading? Let me read it to you again. You see that right there? It says bill. And let me get a link again. And you go down to that code section and you read it yourself. It says bill of exchange. All right. Right here. All right. Now. I'm not going to go too much more deeper into that. I think I kind of like my followers, I put some things in their mind for them to consider when we're talking about taxes because 
at the end of the day, we live in a debt-based system. We live in a debt-based system. Is it going to pop up on the screen? There you go. This is usdebtclock.org. This is a website everybody should be familiar with. Currently, we are $34 trillion in debt. $34 trillion, $348 million, and growing. This represents all the spending in the United States. No, it says U.S. debt clock. It don't say United States of America. United States debt clock. This is the debt of the United States that you may have been made a party through through what is called the principle of novation. Let me give you what. What is a novation? What is a novation? Write this word down. Novation. What is a novation? Novation, definition and meaning. The, subsub, the substitution of a new legal obligation for an old one. All right. The, they, they made the straw man, they made you responsible for the debts they did and they made you liable for it. They made you a surety for it through giving you a social security number. Remember, they borrowed everything and it's for your benefit. All that money they gave to to uh, over these foreign countries is for your benefit. That's what they tell you. It's the U.S. debt. Look at that. Let's, let's, let's pause for a minute and let's look at that. I want y'all to marinate on it for just a second. I want you to watch it. I want you to look at this right here. It says debt per citizen, 102,000. What if everybody in the country all 360 million people in the country gave them a bill of exchange for $102,155. Think they'd refuse them? To kill the national debt. I better be quiet. They might come and knock on my door. Be talking like this. Let me, let me be quiet. Let me stop putting that out there. Let me put the ideas in y'all head. Putting ideas in y'all head. Debt per citizen. Debt per citizen. I've been watching that clock for eight years and it ain't stopped yet. It ain't never stopped. And they got the clock all around. Let's look and see where they got the U.S. dead clock. They got them all around in the cities. They got, they got y'all ain't paying attention. But they got billboards in every state to remind you of what the national debt is. As a matter of fact, my opening video that I got, well, y'all see I'm in my Hellcat and everything right behind me. If you ain't noticed, I didn't even know when I shot the video was the U.S. debt clock was right there. You go look at my opening video. I think, I think, I think, I think, you know, we, I think I gave y'all, let's recap. You need to read George Mercier's Invisible Contracts, mandatory. If any of you thinking about discharging the debt or doing anything, that's mandatory reading. You need to read the affidavit of Walker Todd, that's mandatory reading. You need to read um, the affidavit of sovereignty, that's mandatory reading. You need to read the Clearfield Doctrine. Let's read this real quick. The Clearfield Doctrine. Clearfield Doctrine. Let's see if I can pull it up. Let's 
Somebody pull it up. See if I can get a. All right. Let's see if I pull this up real quick for y'all. Put it on the screen. This is something you need to understand how the government is. Remember, every time I come into the courtroom and I say, I said, is this a criminal action? This civil or criminal? And I said, well, the Constitution for the United States only grants this court two criminal jurisdictions. One is under the common law and the other constitutes a condition of contract under criminal aspects of an admiralty jurisdiction. Admiralty, this is based off the law merchant. It's the business of merchants. It's co commerce. The UCC comes from the law merchant. Private citizens are engaged in contracts. So how did the government get us to come into their jurisdiction? They had to do it from, through a contract. Well, how did, what, what happened to the government? I don't even know what is going on with my internet right now. Seem to be moving very slow. See if I can get this load up. <coughs> All right. The Clearfield Doctrine, essentially, what it talks about is when the federal government started using Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve notes are not the constitutional money of the country. Gold and silver is. So they had to take everything to a private jurisdiction and to get you to come into that jurisdiction, they had to contract with you. It is no different than when you go to uh, Costco's, all right? You cannot go, it, uh, the, you have the macrocosm and the microcosm. The business that they do on the low level is exactly the same kind of business they do on the big level, all right? Everybody is doing it. If you want to come into their business and do business, they want you to have a club membership card is called a social security card that evidences that you are a U.S. citizen. All right, you want to come into the U.S. government and, and be a surety for the U.S. debt, you need to be a U.S. citizen. And the United States is in Washington, D.C. We live in the United States of America. We live in America. America. In America, all the states are united. In the United States, that's a proper noun. That's the name of a corporation. That's why we don't have a United States post office anymore. We have a United States postal service. They give you services. What is 911? That's a service. They tax in you on benefits and privileges. That is what you're taxed on. Please cease and desist with the tax protester arguments and learn how to do business. If you don't want to do business within their jurisdiction, you have an example, someone like the Amish, okay, where you can remove yourself off the grid and not participate on the Monopoly board game. But if you're in the Monopoly board game, you're going to get a token to play the game. It's either going to be called an individual, an association, a partnership, a corporation, a company, an estate or a trust. Let me put this In here, colonies. What is it? If you feel it, what is basically left us? Let me see if it's in here. I kind of like this. Who created the church? It ain't here. What's the difference? Republican democracy. This right here, Fam Guardian. They're a pretty good website. They put this together. Let me see. You can see it. They got a little the thing. Foundation of freedom. I put, I put it in the chat and they, you know, the slide may change your life. What did the colonies come to America? You feel it. Basically, we have three choices left. And these guys, they do a lot of tech stuff. Understanding the limits. The father created sovereign man. God's law, sovereign man. 
And everybody seems to understand this, how the nation was founded, flow of power, words of art, capitalization, straw man, what's in a name, adhesion contracts that got you in a contract, Federal Reserve notes. Uh, where is it at the beginning? Where is it? Martial law, separate government, District of Columbia, the Organic Act of 1871. They created a municipal corporation. That case, if you look at my law library video, I went to the law library and showed you where to find that case. It's a very interesting case when they created, we under a municipal law. Uh, 13th Amendment, limited jurisdiction. This is pretty good right here. This got a lot of good stuff in it. But where was that? Uh, where is that at? I was just looking. I just passed by something. What was it? Yeah, right here. Republic versus democracy. What is the difference? Republic is for man. The democracy is federal. Republic of and by and for the people. Democracy upon the majority of all men. The republic power comes from the people. In a democracy, who determines what to place on the majority of men? Places limitations on government in the re republic. Okay, who holds the power? The feds, the agencies, or the bureaus? Acts as if there are no limits. Bill of Rights and Legislative Bill of for Statutes. Real interesting, but I wanted to get to this Clearfield Doctrine, Clearfield Trust versus the United States. Uh, see, a federal court can make, can make common law rule regarding federal negotiable instruments since they are controlled by federal law. Clearfield Trust versus the United States. So, I just wanted to kind of put something on your mind out there because, you know, a lot of people are confused about things. I think when we get an accurate understanding of the demarcation line that separates public and private, the distinction between a republic and a democracy, understand what Federal Reserve notes are, understand the jurisdiction of the federal government, get an understanding of what United States means as opposed to United States of America. Once we get those things clearly in our mind, we can begin to understand where Caesar's domain is. And then we can render unto Caesar what is Caesar and unto the Lord what is the Lord's. You've been listening to the hottest radio network on the planet. My name is Yusuf L. Peace to the gods and goddesses, and I'll see you later. Study, like, comment, and subscribe. Peace. I'm out.